think over the last 15 years, flow diversion has had a major role to play in our field. And 15 years ago, it was only used for very extreme cases, very large, untreatable giant aneurysms, for example, whereas now we're able to treat uh, smaller bifurcation aneurysms very successfully with flow diversion. And what we've learned over a number of publications is now that we're able to safely treat, uh, in some cases, ruptured aneurysms with aspirin monotherapy and um, get good results uh, for those particular patient cohorts. It's very important to stay ahead of the technology because each evolution of the technology brings some advantages we feel, but it's also very important to evaluate them very closely to look for some of the disadvantages which may accompany the new technology uh, going forward. I think shield technology and other surface modifications are very exciting because we're able to implant this device within the blood vessel, reconstruct the blood vessel from a mechanical point of view, but then the physiology of the patient, how, how the uh, device heals and integrates within the vessel wall is very important. In the acute setting, we have the risk of platelet aggregation and thrombosis, so hopefully this surface modification, and it certainly seems to be the case that it produces less platelet aggregation, less thrombosis, and then of course on the other side we want excellent healing so we don't want to uh, inhibit the healing process by using surface modification so we need to get that balance between the two things. We've seen each generation of the pipeline improve um, mechanically. So Pipeline Classic, which was the original uh, device, we, we could not recapture or reposition. Pipeline Flex, we could then suddenly recapture, reposition, uh, redeploy the device successfully. So that made the procedures less stressful uh, because we had time to think and to reposition. The third generation was the surface modification with the shield technology, which has really revolutionized the field because the, we can use the device in many more aneurysms, and a much safer profile. The fourth generation Vantage have done a number of things. Uh, number one is they have two systems. They have the smaller devices which go through a 21 system, so the two and a half to three and a half millimeter devices go through a 21 phenom, and then the larger devices from three and a half millimeters up to six millimeters go through a 27 phenom. Six millimeters devices are excellent and we can use them in the carotid if there's a dissection or a problem uh, in many cases. In, in acute stroke, for example, where there's a young patient with a dissection, the shield technology is very useful to be able to you know, tack a dissection down where we had to use other stents previously. The other changes which have been made have been a more robust pusher wire on both of the systems which allows you more confidence with uh, delivering the device in distal and tortuous anatomy and also if you need to recapture or resheath the device it's also more effective. Some of the changes also have been shortening of the distal PTFE sleeves which help the distal end of the stent open more readily in comparison to the earlier generations of pipe plan. So we have now the distal end opening very, very well. It's an improvement from flex and from shield, but the proximal end is a little bit uh, sluggish, a little bit slow, and you just need to use a modified technique without uh, heavy uh, forward loading and a more relaxed unsheathing uh, technique, and it opens very effectively in that uh, manner. And we do see some changes within the healing of the vessel with 64 devices, and we see this with other companies as well, um, that we see an increased incidence of intimal hyperplasia and some fish mouthing. Um, it's a unique thing that we do see in greater numbers with 64 uh, braided devices and um, we still need to work out what the reasons behind that are. The exciting thing though is that um, these uh, findings are normally asymptomatic. We looked at first 100 consecutive unruptured cases that we used with Vantage um, that had six months of follow-up. We looked at the occlusion rates, which were very similar to Shield, so there was no uh, change there. Uh, the thromboembolic complication rates and the hemorrhagic rates were also very similar, so the safety profile uh, was similar. The future of flow diversion is exciting. We've seen how far it's come in 15 years. We can see now that we're treating much smaller aneurysms, bifurcation aneurysms, posterior circulation aneurysms, and also ruptured aneurysms in appropriate settings with blister or, or dissecting type aneurysms effectively treated. The future will be to deliver uh, these devices through smaller 
a delivery system. The other thing is I think we'll see uh, modifications to the actual device structure to improve opening, to improve visibility. Uh, with the new Vantage we have drawn fill tube which enhances the visibility of course of the device. And then I'm also hoping that we can maybe get shorter devices as well so that we can um, put less metal into the patient and you know with good imaging and with precise technique we can then deploy shorter uh, flow diverters within that blood vessel without the need for extra metal on either end. Thank you.